I recommend working with Jack to anyone who has questions about their role within their relationship. I've read her work, it's very approachable, it's funny, it's wise, it's kind. It gives everyone a sense of validation in their own choices and to understand why some choices are good and some choices aren't so good, why some are harmful. I believe that she understands people, she understands the choices that they make, and she can help you become a more real, actualized person as a result. Um, the recommendations I have for women using this book are first to get a healing notebook um, so that you can write down some of your responses to the, the activities that they have. Um, and you're going to want to do it in a group setting if, if possible or with a, a friend you feel safe with. Um, and you're going to want to go slow. The slower you go, the faster you heal. The book helps um, deal with this the, uh, the different range of, of partners being um, immature with mental health disorders or substance abuse issues because it really it speaks to everyone. It speaks to all of that. Um, it really breaks it down so you can compare your, your own situation to a number of different situations and really decide for yourself if this is something that is abuse or another issue. This book is really important to me because I wanted to add my voice to the discussions about abusive relationships, destructive relationships, healthy relationships. Particularly, there hasn't been much distinction among the different kinds of relationships, struggles that you could be having. And for a woman, it's really different if her partner has a personality disorder and is honestly working on that but that's a, that's a virtually impossible, but not impossible task to heal from a personality dis disorder. And it's destructive for you if that's your experience with your partner. But it's a really different flavor of experience than, than being with a partner who has attitudes that are essentially misogynistic, that just are an attitude of privilege and that I can do what I want. And sometimes there's a little overlap, which makes for just a terrible destructive mess, but it's not impossible to understand. And it's important because the treatment is really different and the options for what to do are really different. What to look for is really different. Same thing if you have a partner who's come back from service and has PTSD. It's destructive for you and dangerous, but it's really different experience. And it, it can't be all lumped into one thing. It's, he's an abuser, he's just violent. I mean, each of these things are are there are different genesis, there's different treatment. And yet they all have one thing in common, that if you're the person in partner with someone who's being destructive, it's important for you to know what's the main route and what are my options, but it's all destructive for you. It's all taken out of you. And you, the, the, what you need to do, the focus turning back on you and how you're gonna make the plans to move forward, that's pretty much the same. There's another part I really wanted to talk about in a, in a way that feels safe, is that so many women have, are living with the after effects of these traumatic events. And they're, if they're staying with their partners for a time, their partners use the evidence of those after effects of trauma as an excuse and a reason to justify what they were doing. They would just reverse cause and effect. Say, you're, see what a nut you are? That's why I'm doing it. Look what a, cra you're a crazy bitch. The context is everything. You're actually experiencing these things because of how you were treated. And so real evidence for you of whether you can stay with this person is how he handles your wounds. If he's really changing, if he's really coming to terms with what he's done, how he's handling your hair trigger anger, your reactivity is a good litmus test for you to figure out whether I can actually stay in relationship with you. And then finally, you can heal too. And your path is different. It's, it's different to be the person healing from trauma when you haven't been destructive to someone else than it is the person who's healing from trauma who has d almost destroyed other people's lives. And I wanted to talk about those things. I wanted to add my voice to that discussion because the mental health field is, is a great resource. 
but it's not been the place where wonderful insights have come in about women's women's way of being in the world. It has been a very blaming place. And the advocacy world has helped change us and our laws for the better. It's made it safer. And yet they're really benefiting by drawing on the new trauma work that has been done. So there's some to be drawn from each of those worlds. And I wanted to be one of the voices that brought those together. So, because it's about us, right? It's about using it, all that information, so that we feel whole, stronger, and more who we are. <laughs>